This is the one we'll be making. We'll make a start. Um, so yes, this is the card that we'll be making today. Um, what I like about this card is it's just a, a slightly um, a different fold in that it's it's got a narrower card front and that just allows you to bring the inside to the outside so you can um, you know just create some really interesting things and do some fun things on the inside which poke out from the the front card and uh, yeah I use this I create this fold quite a bit in my crafting because I, I like it so I thought today I would share this one with you because, you know, it's um, World Card Making Day after all, so it's all about having fun and crafting. Um, I thought I would start with um, showing you how to make the base um, and just a few little tips that I've found with um, creating this fold because, yeah, just to make it work a little bit nicer. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to touch on um, the bundle that I'm using for this to decorate, and that's the ornamental envelope one. And uh, yeah, it's it's got some lovely um, images that you can use, you know, obviously for decorating a whole range of um, different projects with these beautiful baubles. But I like how there's a slight curve to these images and your lines and they work really nicely on an envelope as it suggests um, as well as you know on your your projects of course um, and this is the die set that goes with it so you get a frame that we're as you can see we're we're using that today with our um, our images but you get all these lovely um, extra border type and envelope liners um, to, to help decorate the package of which your card will arrive at um, or be, be housed in. And that just instantly creates excitement, I think, for the person who is receiving this card because the minute they see, you know, the letter, the envelope that arrives either in the letterbox or even if you're handing it to them, they know... I think it just says that you're they're in for something special and we all love that so yeah so I'll just pop those aside I have prepared a few little bits and as I mentioned in my live earlier today all the dimensions for this project will be in a blog post that will come later this afternoon so you can go back and grab those dimensions if you wanted to create one of these yourself um, I'm just going to pop that here and we'll start with our base. So I have trimmed down an A4 piece of cardstock to, you know, in half, but instead of cutting it on the long edge as we normally would, I've create, I've cut it on the shorter edge uh, so that it creates um, a portrait, portrait card that has the fold at the top, as you can see there. And to do that, what I, how I do that, uh, how I create the rest of the cardstock, is just score it in half. So always cut in half, score in half. And then before I fold, I'm going to just cut, just cut my little panels off the side. Now I'm working off fillet 15 millimeters. And what I'm doing is lining up my blade. I hope that's in screen there. I think it is. Lining up my blade with the score line that's in half. So we will do that there. And then I'm going to turn it around and use the bottom half because it's so much easier to do it that way. So I'm just going to move this up and use the bottom and do another 15 millimeters in and go from the score line down. Now don't worry too much if you've gone past your score line. 
like I have on this one, it actually does help. So you don't want to be cutting too much into your base, but um, a little bit is okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to trim these two little legs off. We don't need those. And this is where the extra trim is going to help. So what I'm going to do is trim it, but you've got your score line here. So I want to trim that off as well. So I'm going just to the right of my score line on this side and on this side it'll be the left. We want to get rid of those. They're just going to create an, a funny looking front if we um, leave those on. So there we go. So we don't need those. We can hang on to those for another project. And then we're left with this weird looking thing. So if we just fold that and crisp it up, that's our little card base started just in there. So what I'll do, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more for you now. Okay, so now it's all about decorating, isn't it? The fun part, really. So what I've done is cut two pieces of designer series paper. Now this one that I'm using today in here is from the Forever Greenery Suite, the Forever Fern designer series paper. Um, so yeah, and these are... I've trimmed these a little bit shorter than my card base. So my card base is 148 millimeters. So I've trimmed that at 147. And um, there's a reason for that. And I'll talk, talk about that in a minute. The width is 16 millimeters. So a little bit wider than our gap. And so it's just as simple as using some liquid glue because we love our liquid glue. That allows us to um gives us the wiggle room that we need if we need to slide it in in position so what i'm going to do is just line it up with the corner the outside corners and edges and it's it trimming it a little bit shorter allows me to sit it just under the score line. And I'll show you why that one is doing that is really important. In just one second, I'll get this on. So there we go. Oh, wiggle. Just going to move him over before I push it down. Wiggle room. We love wiggle room. Okay, so now I've cleared the score line. And so by trimming it shorter and trimming off this excess bit a little bit shorter than the score line allows my top to fold nice and flat and neatly. If I cut my designer series paper the same size as my card base, what will happen is it will push up and interfere with the fold and so it will just kind of want to stick out a little bit which is not so bad you know when you've got it sitting up but what happens is it can sort of end up doing this whereas if we've got you know a little bit of clearance and we crisp that edge up it will sit nice and um, you know sit nice and tight when it's on display so then we just want to decorate our front panel um, and this is a piece of garden green. I've chosen garden green to match in with my designer paper today and I have embossed it with the Dainty Diamonds embossing folder, which I think is just gorgeous. It's in the mini catalogue, the August 2, oh, I'm running out, um, the... August to mini, August to December mini catalogue. And I haven't even had a drink today yet. Okay, there we go. So we'll just line that one up and we will line it up at the bottom. Oh, wiggle room, we love wiggle room. And then we can push that down 
and have those in nice and flat. So there we go, that's our card base just starting to come together. Perfect. Alrighty, and now what we need to do is just stamp our elements. So of course we're using the beautiful baubles, which as you can see, I've got the nice little pinky halo growing going already. You can tell I've been using a lot of red already, and that's cool. Again, it's a photopolymer stamp set, so you'll want to make sure that you're, you're stamping on your mat when you are um, using this set for extra cushioning. And we'll do it this way. Oop. That was a big squish. Now I've got ink everywhere. I stamped the ink pad. A lesson of what not to do. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we've got a piece of Whisper White scrap cardstock and we're going to stamp it in the real red first and we're going to hang our uh, little um, hanging threads in the design just off the top. And what this will do, oh, there we go. And what this will do is give us some, some space to be able to, um, when we die cut it, it will, like I'm using the nested, stitched nested labels die set, and it's the largest one in the collection. So when I, um, when you go to die cut it, I fit it nicely into the little um, arrow section down the bottom here and make sure that the top of the cardstock fits neatly into the little corner elements. So when, when you pass it through, it will look like this. Ta-da! So there you go. And that one will sit nicely just there. So what we will do next is just use some more liquid glue because we love liquid glue and stick it on flat. And I'm going to position this a little bit lower on my card front. And what I like about this embossing folder is that it gives you all these kind of faux grid and so it's easy to line them up, <laughs> which I really like. So there we go. And then, obviously, when we're making these, we would clean our stamp off. And then we would stamp it again in the green and punch them out. And so when you're making one of these, I find it's easier to make, or just as easy to make two, because you are getting six of the green so you can use half for one and half for the other so it's really cool so what we'll do is we'll set those aside for a minute the, the next thing I want to do is tie on my gold thread now this is the thread that's from the forever greenery suite and um, it's quite thin and it has you know beautiful delicate little strands so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to open it up and have a, a portion hanging off the edge and I'm going to hold it steady and wrap it around wrap it around three times and fix those up after there we go and we're just going to snip off a portion as well. That just makes it easier, I find, to tie. So what we're going to do is tie a double knot. I find it's easier to do a bow when you're not fussing with keeping it tight as well. So I'm going to tie a double knot. This is scary, tying a bow live. Because, you know, sometimes they can work and sometimes... 
not so well, but that's okay. We will get there. And after all, it's handmade. That's the way it's meant to work. So. Okay, so that makes it easier now to worry about my bow. And the way I do my bows is with bunny ears. And like I said in my earlier video, bows don't just happen. They do take practice and they do uh, need a little bit of care to make them look nice. So I've done bows. Now that's quite a big opening there, but that's okay. We've got plenty of plenty of thread here to play with. So I'm holding it steady with my fingers and I'm just using the thread to adjust it, adjust my loops so that they're nice and even. So there we go. I tie them upside down. I don't know why, I don't understand the mechanics, but I find that I tie them upside down because when I turn it around, it gives me a nicer finish. So if I was to tie it the right way up, for some reason, when I, yeah, when I flip it around the right way or when I'm finished, it doesn't look right. So yeah, I've, I've found that tying them upside down just works a lot better for me. So I give that one a go. Now, just to hold this a little bit more secure, I'm going to use a glue dot. Um, I just find that it just gives me more, it's more about me having peace of mind that it's going to stay and not move and those sorts of things. So I'm just going to roll that into a sausage and give it a little stretch. And then I'm going to just carefully pop it along there and push that into place. So there we go. So then we've just got our sentiment that goes in the top there. So what I'm going to do is bring back this piece here. And I just want to show you something. My class ladies always say to me, Rose, you've popped your stamp on your block crooked again. But what I find is I actually do this on purpose. So I tend to get my grid in. I usually have grid paper when I'm doing this, but I'm going to wing it today. And that's partly because I'm using a punch and I can. So what I usually do with my sentiments is line my sentiments up on my grid paper so that they are straight. And then I hold my block so that my block is comfortable in my hand. And that's how I pick up my stamp. So that when I stamp it, it stamps straight and my hand is comfortable and I'm not doing something like this with my hand. It's really, I don't, I just, it took me a little while to figure out that's how I did it. I don't, yeah. So, and that's why they're crooked on my block, but they're not. There's method in my madness, but yeah. So that's how, yeah, that's how they turn out. <laughs> so we're just going to stamp this one. This little greeting here is from the Itty Bitty Christmas stamp set. I love this stamp set. I use it quite a bit. It's just gorgeous. I'm going to pop that aside and we're going to use our classic label punch. And we're going to punch him out. And then we're just going to use some mini dimensionals. Alrighty, so I'm just going to roll my little bow forward so I can tuck him in nice and straight there. Just giving it a little bit of room for my bow. And then we can neaten up these edges, we'll even them up a little bit more. So that's that one. So all that's left now is just to embellish them. So we have got So 
So you've got red and a nice mix of red and green ornaments hanging. And the other thing too is like if it's a little bit faint on one or you did what I did before and, um, you know, miss a bit, like he's still usable because I can cover that up. He's perfect. So, yeah. There's always ways of making it work. And then to finish off, we are just going to add some gold bling to him, to this guy. And what I like to do is pull mine off the backing. So, you know, when they come, they come attached to the backing cardstock. I like to pull mine off when I'm using them because what that allows me to do is just roll the plastic that it comes on and that exposes the glue dot and then I can get in underneath if I don't push too hard. But when you push too hard, you kind of push it all the way off like I just did. Okay. So there's one and then there's all there's a couple of different sizes in this pack so just get in underneath there oh that was good I'm all thumbs today always happens there we go So there we go, and that's the card today. So it's using that one, this one. This is, um, so I wanna show you another one that I did, same sort of one. Now this one I did with my, for World Card Making Day today, I we organized a team swap. So um, my girls who participated will be um, receiving this one in the mail. And this is using the, lovely new in color just jade and it matches in with um some of the paper that comes out of the flowers for all seasons cardstock so that's the sunflower one but yes that you have these beautiful patterns inside there as well and i've just used some of the red rhinestones these ones are from the holiday packs and so for some of the alternate ones, I've popped on some green on those where the red um, is showing through. So yeah, so it's really cool. And I, what I also like is that both of these packs, the Forever um, Greenery and the Flowers for All Seasons are both available now in the Designer Series paper sale this month. So that's, um, that's even better. I might just grab another pack of that because I um, don't have any more of this sheet left. So... I want to make some more of these for Christmas coming up. So, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this one, this project as well. I, um, as I said earlier, all the dimensions for these projects that I've shared today, including the one from my Instagram channel, Instagram TV channel, will be available in a blog post that's coming up shortly. Um, yeah. So, happy card making day. I hope that you um, are. Yeah, you're crafting today and uh, remember, make a card and don't forget to actually send it. We'll craft again. Thanks for watching. Bye.